We could all name some large public health issues affecting our society. COVID, obesity, smoking are just a few. However, for looking at data showing long-term impacts to health over time, one of the largest impacts actually comes from chronic stress. Stress afflicts those of all ages, genders, socioeconomic backgrounds, and beliefs. Over the next two sessions of Morning Minutes, we're going to dive into the idea of stress and balance. This week, I want to talk about some of the effects stress has on the human body and mind. Next week, I'll talk about some tips, tools, and resources to help manage stress in our everyday lives. Before we dive in, take 30 seconds and type in the chat box one negative impact or outcome of stress. If you're not in a class meet, please just think about it or write one down on your own. Stress, however, is not always bad. Stress, at its root, is a biological function of survival and success. On one side of the stress teeter-totter is the good stress, or eustress. These are things that help us succeed, pursue a challenge, and give us healthy nervous excitement. Think about the last time you had butterflies before a game or a recital or show, or maybe you had a tough assignment in class that you had to persist through. Perhaps you had a big goal that you're working towards. The stress you feel often in working towards that is that you stress. Another word you could substitute here is motivation. In the chat box, please write one thing that is a good stressor in your life. The other end of the teeter-totter is what most people associate with the word stress, and that's called distress. These are things that cause us to stop, slow down, be overly worried, or otherwise get in the way of us moving forward. Often people might wish to be stress-free, but that really would mean they're stagnant people with no motivation. What I think they generally could mean is that they want to be distress-free. We need the use stress to help us reach goals and find success that we seek for ourselves. In the conversation about stress, we also have to consider the duration or length of time we're exposed to stress. Most of the time we use the word chronic for long-term and acute for short-term. The graph that you see on the screen will help us look at the impacts of different types of stress. Let's look more closely at distress. Distress is the ultimate gateway drug. The results of stress often lead to maladaptive or bad decisions, habits, and circumstances. And much like a drug, the root is at the chemical level in our brains. While often not fun, acute or short-term distress is generally not a major impact on our health and well-being. It can actually border on the edge of eustress and distress in many circumstances. Some examples may be having an important quiz or test coming up at the end of the week. You may be nervous or even lose a little bit of sleep over it, but once that exam is over, the distress tends to be reduced heavily or goes away completely. The main way we see stress have a major negative impact on our life is generally through chronic stress or long-term stress. This is constant exposure to stressful situations, people, or environments. This chronic stress can cause widespread and sometimes even debilitating problems. This can include impacts on our body, like tension headaches, increased risk for heart conditions, over or under eating, and even reproductive issues. Some of these things sound like things that older people get, and it's more common that you see this in older folks, but it's often the result of chronic stress over their early, adolescent, and adult lives. It also has a heavy impact on our brains and mental health. The most common impacts of chronic stress include anxiety, depression, anger, insomnia, suicidal ideation, and self-harm. A potentially more relatable analogy of chronic stress could be a car engine. Please in the chat box, 
type what you think would happen if you constantly redlined or even had an elevated RPM in your car. The answer is while the engine is designed to take short bursts or periods of higher RPM, it is not designed to have that type of load constantly. Pretty soon you'll notice worsening problems that eventually will cause the motor to break down. We as humans function very similarly. We can handle stressful situations and periods of stress, but long-term exposure is not healthy. Our bodies respond to stress in four general ways. Fight, flight, or freeze are the three most common, and some would add a fourth F called fawn. Fight is one of our most natural responses. It goes back to when we were not the top of the food chain, and this elevates our blood pressure, increases response time to a threat, and releases adrenaline. This is often seen as being aggressive or demanding in response to stress. Think back. Can you think of a stressful situation that you experienced and remember being jittery, shaky, or even feel like you could faint afterwards? This is often the result of adrenaline that was released during that stressful circumstance. In school, this could look like arguing, talking back, or acting out. Flight is another option, and that is to escape the situation as soon as possible. Usually this happens when a viable escape route is open. With enough chronic stress exposure, this can also turn into avoidance of even eustress situations or that positive stress. In school, it can look like changing the subject, making excuses, or blaming others. Freeze is one that was added a while back and we actually see quite a bit of it in school and society. This is the classic deer in the headlights. When faced with a stressor, you neither fight or flight, but simply don't do anything. This looks like going silent, not responding or engaging, or refusing to listen. In school, it could look like not accessing the offered help, or not responding when a teacher calls on you. Lastly, and most recently added to the list is fawn. The fawn response involves immediately moving to try to please a person to avoid any conflict. This could be saying the right things, looking to others to determine how you feel, having trouble saying no or taking on more even when you are overwhelmed because it's what someone else wants or thinks is best. This is people pleasing to the max. And while people pleasing in itself is a good thing, this fawn response is often due to stress and is generally unhealthy at this level. Think to yourself, what is your most natural response to stress? Are you more of a fighter, flighter, freezer, or fawner? Next week, I am gonna come back with some ways to help address stress, both acute and chronic. So we're not gonna leave you with this mountain of information and say good luck. It is important to cover the foundations though, so that you understand how to identify the different types of stress you may be facing. It is important to note that not all stress and environments are under your control. Perhaps you have a home that is stressful, a relationship that causes chronic stress. While it's not always possible to remove or solve all sources of stress, the tools we will cover next week will be something you can take control of and own. With a little practice and patience, you'll start to see some changes in your stress level. Finally, I wanna take one deep breath in and out. Breathing is a very good tool that you can use right away. But the other thing that I want you to do before we get into our tips and tools next week is to think of one or two people in your head and then write them down on a piece of paper or something that you can look at later that you would turn to if your stress levels were unbearable or you found yourself struggling with some of the negative symptoms of chronic stress. We'll see you next week, Lakers, with the second part of our stress lesson.